Hello you guys, happy Sabbath, hello little children. Today we are here with another Bible story. And today we're gonna portray the creation to felt. I hope you guys enjoy this. So let's go ahead and close your eyes, okay? Let's invite the Christ and his presence to be with us. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ with us as we have this story. As simple and as powerful as it is, as it reveals evolution, we thank you that you have made this earth and us to worship you. And for us, not never to be worshiping the creature but the creator. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, you guys, so let's turn to our Bibles in the book of Genesis, chapter 1. And for those who are new, Genesis is the first book in the Bible. And we're using the King James Version. Ready? Verse 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. Did you notice that? Beautiful. And there was light. Let's read what it says here in my notes. On the first day of time, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was thus called into existence without form and void. Just like we turn off the lens, that's how it was. Darkness covered the Creator's work. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God divided the light from the darkness and called the one day and the other night. On the second day of time, God said, let there be a firmament. So let's read on day number two. Uh, verse five, first of all it says, And God called the night day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning was the first day. And verse six, And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters under the earth, under the firmament from the waters, which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And just I want you to pay attention of something very important. Okay, you guys, now let's talk about what does this mean, this firmament? How did God do this? So as you see right here now in this felt, we have the beautiful sky and the waters, which are the oceans, the waters. So God, these two things were together, but then God, what he did was he separated them. So let's continue now on day number two. And God said, let there be firm in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. So also you have to recognize there's a big mass of waters that God divides. So now there's not only oceans, but now there's rivers and lakes and springs. Okay. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which are under the firmament. And from the waters which are above the firmament, it was so. And, call, and God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. So as you can notice very clearly that in all the creation, every day that God is doing something, he's calling the evening and the morning the first day. Very important, okay? Because we're going to notice that in the sixth and seventh day. Okay, you guys, now let's turn to verse number 9. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the light dry appear, and it was so. So here we have the, dr the dry land, how it appeared. And you see now there's a dry land and there's the ocean. Uh, and God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called the seas, and God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass. You see the beautiful grasses on the earth? And the herb yielding seed, and the, and the tree fruit yielding fruit after his kind, who seed in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb, yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. 
and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning was the third day. So on this beautiful third day, we have trees which have fruit, which is, they give seeds. So we have, we should put some fruit on this tree, but you get the point, it's a fruit tree, okay? Let's move on to the next day. Okay, now let's go to the fourth day, Genesis chapter one, verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament and the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light and the darkness and God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. So what did God say to them? He set up, I'm gonna stand up now and put here a sun which is the, the thing that rules the day when the sun comes out of the day but when it's night we have the moon, right? So here we have now the moon. When the sun goes down, then the moon comes up, right? So God created these blue things to give light to the world. When it's dark, we have the moon to shine us. When it's the day, we have the sun. So when the sun goes down, what happens? God created what? These beautiful stars. There we go. Now let's go to the next day. Genesis chapter 1. And we left up, let's go to verse 20. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, the, and fowl that they may fly over the earth in the open firmament in heaven. And God created great wills, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind. Every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters of the seas, and let the fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Then I stand up again. So we have this beautiful water on this fourth day, but on the fifth day, God says, let the critters come out, which are the, the whales, the fishes, the fowls, which are the birds. Can you imagine how beautiful it was? These new creatures that never existed, but now exist on this beautiful earth, which we call our home. So that's what we have on this fifth day. Let's move to the next verse. Follow us. Sure. Looking upon the sixth day, let's see what the Bible says. And let's see in verse 24. And God mm -hmm. said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the earth after his kind, and cattle after his kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. But you notice in the other times after he said, it, God said it was good, and then the evening and the morning were the third, second, or something day. But this time, God doesn't stop right there. Look what it says. I'm gonna about to put what the creation and felt. Well, let's see what the other verse is saying. 
verse 26, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image and in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the earth and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And verse 29, And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree and of which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed to you it should be for me, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fall of the earth, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life, I have given you every herb for me. And it was so, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So now after God had created all this little fowl and the fishes, God says he create the beast of the field. So what are the beasts? The tiger, the elephants, the lambs, the bears. Can you imagine how many little animals there were? Wish we could fit every kind of animal that God created, but we're just trying to teach you something here to see the creative power that God has for him to bring all these animals into existence. And if he can't create all these animals, then he can't create. And it's a mighty, wonderful, powerful God. Created animals, he's creating a clean heart, make you a new creature. So look at the doggy, so cute. And the goats. So after God created all the bees, different kinds, what does the Bible tell us? that he created man in his image. Let's put Adam here. According to the Bible, God created who first? He created Adam. And then in Daniel chapter two, I mean in Genesis chapter two, you see that out of his rib, he created Eve. So here we have Adam and Eve as his partner here. And all the animals were under the dominion of Adam and Eve. But now because of sin, has entered into the earth. Not all the animals are wild, and it's all killing and eating. And what did God said the diet of the animals was? The herb of the field. But after everything was created, he created the man and then the woman. He told them to multiply. The animals, God told them to multiply. But yet, let's see what it says. In verse 2, verse 1 of chapter 2, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which he had made. We're going to put a pause right now, and we're going to come back. As you notice here now, I fixed a little bit the felt for and as you notice over here, we have the felt of Jesus. And after Jesus Christ had finished all of the beautiful, complete earth, what does the Bible tell us he did? Was he tired? What does he do? Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his word which he had made, and rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work. After God finished creating all his wonders and his beautiful creations, even us, the human race, God chose to rest, to live as an example, to follow his steps, that we too should rest, not because we created something, but because we follow his steps. And if God sanctified the seventh day, and we are to hearken unto the sound of that message to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So I hope you enjoyed this Bible study. It was a little challenging. We had to put a lot of pauses, but it is for people to enjoy the Word of God as it is written. You guys have a nice day. Happy Sabbath.